Welcome to this exclusive 360 tour of the NASA John F. Kennedy Space Center, the gateway to the stars. Your amazing journey will take you, where NASA launches rockets to space, how they prepare astronauts for their missions, on-site rocket factories, and the most beautiful space museum and theme park in the world. Your journey begins, at the Neil Armstrong Operations and Chuckout Building, on NASA Parkway. Inside, are actually two large interconnected buildings. Facing north, is the Apollo Spacecraft Workshop No. 1. This spacecraft factory was used to manufacture and test hardware on the Apollo Lunar Module, the Command and Service Module, Space Station Components, and now the NASA Orion spacecraft. When you're working with delicate components, contamination is not an option. The factory workers have to wear full protective clothing, to prevent dust or biological stuff, from damaging components and machinery. The floors are also polished to a shine. You can visit this workshop, and take a peek at the Orion spacecraft behind glass, or barriers. On the other side of the building, is the astronauts' dormitories. These consist of 12 bedrooms, where astronauts sleep prior to launch day, and comes with a kitchen and dining area, where the crew of a space mission, can get together for meals, and enjoy buffet dinners and take lots of photos. Down the hall is the suit up preparation area, where astronauts put on their space suits, with the help of technicians, and exit the iconic walkway to the Astroven. In the center road, is the public viewing area, where crowds cheer at the astronauts. Let's take a tour of the iconic VAB, the Vehicle Assembly Building. As soon as you step into this iconic building, and look up, you'll find that this huge factory is breathtakingly massive. This huge factory is 525 feet tall, or 160 meters. It's used to assemble the pre-manufactured rocket stages, and stack them vertically onto the mobile launch platform, that moves the whole rocket to the launch pads. It's made from nearly 100,000 tons of steel, enough to build one of the World Trade Center Twin Towers. Inside, you can see Space Shuttle Endeavour, and Atlantis. The VAB has two large areas, the low bay, and the high bay. The low bay is where the rocket stages, are moved in for preliminary checks and equipment fitting. They are lifted by overhead cranes and moved into the high bay. The 300-ton capacity cranes, hoist the parts into this area, for vertical assembly onto the launch pad, which itself is atop the mobile launch platform. A series of bookshelf-style scaffolding rigs slide into place, so workers can bolt the rocket stages together. The main doors are so large they take 45 minutes to fully open or close. Wanna visit the upper levels? Down this corridor, you'll find a series of malfunctioning elevators. Right. I'm kidding that's just from another video from an apartment. Don't worry the VAB's elevators are in excellent working order. Let's take an elevator ride, to the upper levels of the VAB. On this high platform, you can see more steelwork, and various platforms and girders undergoing renovations. NASA is renovating and upgrading the structure and machinery of this building, to be able to accommodate the new big rocket, the Space Launch System. All of the pre-manufactured rocket parts, will be shipped here from the Chris Hadfield Rocket Factory 1000 miles away, and stacked on this launch platform. The SLS rocket, in its largest configuration, will stand around 114 meters in height, taller than the Saturn V. Let's head back to the elevators, 
and ride to the top of the VAB. You're standing over 530 feet above KSC. It's a long way down. On clear days, you can see over 24 miles away. On the roof, tourists and NASA employees can view an epic rocket launch from this amazing building. In front of the VAB, is the largest NASA logo in the world, it's over 40 meters across, or 135 feet. On the left hand side, is a US flag, which is also the size of a hockey field. There is lots of parking space, and a photo shoot zone, where on your KSC bus tour, you can take cool pictures with your friends. Surrounding this great building are various roads, and channels for the crawler transporter, and vehicle access. Let's take a tour of the Launch Control Center, the LCC. Let's step through the lobby. You can see, that the floors and walls are made of white marble, and are adorned with posters and mission patches, about the NASA Space Shuttle program, as well as the Apollo program, and other space missions. Inside the LCC are four large control rooms, connected in series. Inside this one, is where NASA operated the Space Shuttle launches, and is now renovated for the upcoming SLS rockets. This is a beautiful place, the desks and computer worktops are made from high-grade steel, and are cladded in decorative wooden decor. Some computer screens, still use the good old cathode ray tubes. During operation, the launch control center is where flight controllers administer procedures needed to launch manned and unmanned rockets from the Kennedy Space Center. They have extra access to lots upon lots of rocket systems, via cables and remote control, even more than Houston, but in fact the LCC and Houston work together, during a mission's most dangerous critical moment of its flight. The glass of this building is bulletproof, and reinforced with beams of high-strength steel to protect the occupants from any blasted debris, from an unlikely event that a rocket explodes. On either side of each control room, is a cornered enclosed area for vital controllers, to have an uninterrupted access to other critical rocket systems, and monitoring equipment. Let's take a peek inside the other areas. This is the control room, that was used during the Apollo program in the 1960s and 1970s. You can see, that it still has its classic 1960s appearance, because all the equipment, CRTs, desks, computers, walls and cabinets, have been archived and maintained in its glory. Maybe a few other modern items, like flat screen computer monitors, have slipped in over the years, but the control room still looks the same as it appears during the moon landings. Let's explore the surrounding areas of the Vehicle Assembly Building. Here is the Space Shuttle Orbiter Processing Facility, which is actually three hangars. This mini hangar was used to refurbish the Space Shuttle after every mission. Special jigs, and retractable scaffolding surrounded the Space Shuttle, to allow engineers to check every area, including the thermal protection tiles, cargo bay, avionics and of course the three RS-25 engines. Nowadays the OPF is used to manufacture and service the Boeing CST-100 Starliner spacecraft, and also provide storage, for the new Space Launch System main engines. OPF number 3 is archived to its shuttle era appearance. On the other side of this complex, is large amounts of grass space, so tourists can view a rocket launch at Kennedy. Behind you, is a series of cute inflatable balloons, that are shaped like the Space Launch System, and the Orion spacecraft. Here is the launch dashboard sign. From here, you can view the stats of a mission launch, and the iconic countdown clock. 
This part of Kennedy Space Center is very romantic, as every sunrise and sunset displays a vast array of lights, clouds and romantic sceneries. You can also see a large reservoir that connects to a river. This river and pier, is where the NASA Pegasus barge docks, so workers can unload the rocket parts that have been transported, by sea from the NASA Chris A. Hadfield rocket factory in New Orleans. When the light fades, the lights of the VAB illuminate its beauty. The temperature drops, and you can enjoy a nice cool breeze. Also in the area is the Space Launch System Launch Tower. Now fully constructed, it will be taller than the Saturn V Launch Tower, in the Apollo era. It's also painted gray, instead of red. You can also view this complex, from the nearby office building's top floor restaurant, and its observation deck. Near the launch countdown clock, is the NASA News Center. This building is where television broadcasters, and NASA meetings about launch stats and events are held. The facility also makes podcasts, and forum articles for the NASA News Channel. Let's explore the launch pads. The Kennedy Space Center actually has two launch pads, Pad 39A and 39B. The launch pad roads, stretches over 3 miles, or 5 kilometers from the VAB. Let's explore Pad 39A. Near its entrance, is a TSA checkpoint, as well as a mini SpaceX rocket factory. Up here, is a relatively shallow 5 degree incline. The pad itself is made of 110,000 tons of reinforced concrete and steel. Seen here, is the flame channel trench, that funnels the explosive rocket exhaust away from the rocket. A series of water pipes, pump seawater into this area, to cool it, and also absorb extreme acoustical energy. The mobile launch platform, is moved into place, on top of the pad support columns, via the crawler transporter. The launch tower and payload bay gantry is made from 4,000 tons of steel, and has a tower equipped with an elevator system, that takes the astronauts to the top of the rocket. We're standing over 70 meters above the ground. Here is where the Space Shuttle astronauts, walked across the gantry arm to the Space Shuttle, Also here is the zip wires. Yes, there is actually a zip wire ride on the launch tower, but sadly it's only used for emergencies. It's called the emergency egress zip wire, where in the case of an emergency, or imminent explosion, the astronauts and ground crew can escape in mine carts, and ride down the 600 meter long cables to a safe area, where there is a bunker. Inside the bunker, the astronauts and technicians can ride out a rocket explosion, sheltered in what is known as the NASA rubber room, the name comes from the rubber cushion panels of the bunker, that act as shock absorbers. The bunker has its own food and oxygen supply, that can allow 24 people to survive for two days. Let's head back to the launch pad. We're on top of the mobile launch platform, a 6,000 ton steel box shaped pad, the NASA Space Shuttle launched from this platform, and you can see the securing clamps, that held the shuttle to the pad, and a series of explosive bolts detonate, to release the SRBs upon launch. The pad also comes with various nozzles and pipes, that flood the pad with thousands of tons of water, to protect it from the intense 5000 degree heat of the rocket exhaust. The pad is also rented by SpaceX to launch its Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. On the south side, is a public observation area, where you can take pictures of the rocket at the pad, and place cameras to film the launch. Obviously, this is a no-go area, during the rocket launch, as the noise will be lethal. Let's move over to Pad 39B. This pad is where the NASA Space Launch System will launch from. This launch pad is identical to 39A. It connects to the same causeway, and stretches for an additional one and a half miles. 
Seven miles south, is the United Launch Alliance rocket launch pad, known as the Cape Canaveral Space Launch Complex 37. This is where the Delta IV, and the Atlas V rocket launches occur. Near the complex, is a small engine exhibit, that features one of the RS-25 engines from the space shuttle. Let's take a tour of the shuttle landing facility. This super long runway stretches over 4 kilometers, and is the main landing site for the Space Shuttle Orbiter, and other NASA aircraft, can land here too. Off to the side, is another steel structure, called the Matey Mate device. If the Space Shuttle had to land somewhere other than Florida, typically as a result of bad weather, a modified NASA Boeing 747 aircraft, picks up the orbiter, and transports it to Kennedy, where this crane carefully removes it from the plane, and places it down onto the tarmac, for towing to the orbiter processing facility. This shot was taken at Space Center Houston, another very exciting space visitor complex, at the Johnson Space Center, but that's a topic for a future video. Let's explore the SSPF or Space Station Processing Facility. Inside, is a decorative lobby, with lots of space posters and flags. There's a visitor center store, and sofas for guests and employees. Let's take a peek inside the main manufacturing workshop. The Space Station Processing Facility, is where the iconic International Space Station was manufactured and assembled. The components are then transferred, to the Space Shuttle cargo transfer containers, to manufacture a space station module, you need steel and aluminum metal. In a steel mill, an arc furnace melts the metal and casts it into sheets. Then workers make a cylinder-shaped module, from various segments welded together in the factory. The hull is then transferred, to the space station processing facility, where workers install the stainless steel outer panels, and insert a middle layer of bulletproof Kevlar to protect the module from micrometeorites. The workers then install racks, and space station equipment. The various avionics, cargo, laptops, experiments and computers are installed, using this machine into the module. Each space station module, contains 8 to 24 racks, and each ISS rack weighs around a ton. Over here is the rack equipment processing area, where technicians install wires, controls and experiments in steel boxes, which are assembled into a rack unit. The floors in the SSPF are made of reinforced concrete, polished with a latex wax material, to maintain cleanliness. The lights in the workshop are square and emit a warm white color. Through the black windows is an observation area for tourists, and inside is a restaurant, where you can have delicious meals and snacks. The Space Station Processing Facility was constructed in 1991, and is now used to process cargo spacecraft, and construct the future Deep Space Gateway. Outside the building, is a loading yard for equipment. If you look behind you, you can see the Neil Armstrong Operations and Chuckout Building. Let's take a tour of the visitor complexes. On the other side of the VAB, is the famous Saturn V Center. Inside, is a large exhibition area, with polished floors, and beautiful blue steel columns. The Saturn V rocket, is a launch vehicle that took men to the moon, and this rocket is separated into its individual stages. There's lots to do in just this building. There's lots of space and full posters, artifacts, and even a cinema screen performance of the space missions. There's a space shop, one of the two largest space shops in the world. Outside the Saturn V building, is another rocket launch viewing area, and also an exterior observation stand, inclined at 30 degrees. Experience the roaring sound, and great views of a rocket launch, and the VAB. We have now reached the most adventurous part, of our 360 tour of Kennedy Space Center. Welcome to the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex, the heaven of space. As soon as you step through, the stainless steel doors of the complex, 
awaits you as a large-scale replica of the Space Shuttle stack. Step inside the Atlantis building, awaits you as the real, yes this is the real Space Shuttle Atlantis, that has flown to space on over 30 missions. It's tilted at an angle of 43.21 degrees, symbolizing the countdown of the shuttle launch. Nearby, is the Hubble Space Telescope replica. There's even an area, where you can go inside replica modules, of the International Space Station. There's so much to do, at the Kennedy Space Center, that I don't want to spoil it, but I guarantee you'll have a blast. The Kennedy Space Center has several plazas. This plaza has its iconic NASA logo, and the world's largest space shop. There's a building for Mars experiences, and down here is the amazing IMAX theater. Let's take a look at the Hubble Space Telescope exploration exhibits. Here, you can see lots of stuff about the telescope and its discoveries. Again, there's more, that you'll have to find out, when you visit. Let's take a view of the Rocket Garden, a vast romantic array of plants and rockets. On display are the real rockets, the Gemini Titan rocket, Mercury Redstone and Atlas, and the Saturn 1B. At its entrance, is the most beautiful mural of the International Space Station. Wanna stop for delicious meals? There's lots of restaurants and barbecue stands. Inside the Orbit Cafe, you can have lots upon lots of varieties of delicious food, cooked up by the top chefs of NASA. Behind the other areas is the Astronaut Memorial, a beautiful granite marble panel, that lists the names of the courageous astronauts that were lost on the Apollo 1 fire, and the Space Shuttle Challenger and Columbia disasters. During special events, KSC can hold music festivals, rocket launch parties and many more. Like as I said earlier in the video, viewing beautiful sunsets is a very romantic experience. Take your date, to the Kennedy Space Center, a place that's truly out of this world. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and stay tuned for the next 360 experience of the NASA Johnson Space Center.